In the today's session, I'm going to teach you about the setups. What are setups? Setups are sweet, viscous, concentrated, aqueous solutions. The setups may be flowered setups or it may be medicated setups also. To the flowered setup, if you add some medicament, it becomes medicated setup. That's all. Okay, they are sweet, viscous, concentrated, aqueous solutions. They have the high osmotic pressure also. For example, simple setup. Simple setup, Indian pharmacopoeia or British pharmacopoeia. It is having 66.6% of the sucrose made by it. Sucrose is a disaccharide. In the simple setup, it is present at a strength of 66.6% made by it. What is the need of 66.6% here? There is a principle here in the simple setup. 2 grams of sucrose protects 1 gram of water from the microbial attack. That's the reason we are adding such a strength of the sucrose. In this preparation, 66.6 grams of sucrose protects 33.33 grams of the water from the microbial attack. In such a high concentration of the sucrose, it is providing high viscosity and high osmotic pressure. Because of this high osmotic pressure, any microorganism enters into the preparation, it cannot survive. The cell wall completely ruptures. That's why simple syrups are self-preservatives also. Okay, let's go to the details of the syrups. They mask the unpleasant taste of the bitter drugs. Bitter. Example, if in, in such a case, you can use the cocoa syrup. Then when the cocoa syrup is used to mask the unpleasant taste of the bitter drugs. Raspberry syrup, raspberry syrup is used to mask the saline, salty and sour taste of the drugs. Saline, salty and sour taste of the drugs. These are the two flavored syrups, cocoa syrup and raspberry syrup. And we have two more flavored syrups, that is orange syrup and cherry syrup also. These two syrups are preferred when the drugs requires acidic medium. When the drugs require acidic medium, we prefer these two types of syrups. So depending upon the need, we can use different types of the flavored syrups. Right? What are the other uses of these syrups? Properties you can Patient compliance. Sweet preparation anybody likes. And pediatric patients, children, they prefer a sweet preparation automatically. And it is a demersant action and soothing action. That's why they are used in the preparation of the cough syrup. And as I told you, they are the self preservatives because of the high strength of the sucrose. It provides the high osmotic pressure and they are self preservatives and due to the high osmotic pressure. Apart from the sucrose, we used to add a few more substances in the formulation of syrups that is polyols. Polyol, it may be glycerol or sorbitol. Glycerol or polyhydric alcohol, you can say that. These substances are added to the syrups to retard crystallization of sucrose. Generally, sucrose, there is a possibility for crystallization during the summer season or whenever there is a change of temperature. There is a possibility for the evaporation of the moisture or aqueous solution from the syrup and sucrose may crystallize. It may stop the, uh, what is that, it may uh, it may cause the capping problem. It may cause the capping problem. So in such a case, better to add glycerol or sorbitol. Right? Then glycerizer syrup is used to mask the salty taste of the bromides, iodides and chlorides. Glycerizer, what is that glycerizer? It's a natural preparation. Glycerizer glabra is a crude drug. Glycerizer glabra, from that to prepare the glycerizer syrup and we can, we can use this one to mask the salty taste of the bromides, iodides and chlorides. And apart from the sucrose, I said to add the glycerol or sorbitol. These are the non-sugars, you can say that they are not carbohydrates. They are non-sugars. These non-sugars, apart from the uh, glycerol, sorbitol, we can add the propylene glycol also in the preparation of syrups. But these are glycogenic in nature. They are not carbohydrates. but they are glycogenic in nature. What do you mean by glycogenic? Converts to glucose in the body. 
So we cannot use for the diabetic patients. Then what about the syrup for the diabetic patient? We can use non-glycogenic substances. Non-glycogenic substances we can use in the preparation of the syrup for the diabetic patients. To build up the viscosity, we can use methyl cellulose. We can use hydroxy methyl cellulose. We can use methyl cellulose or hydroxy methyl cellulose to build up the viscosity for the syrup for the diabetic patients. So syrup means sweet preparation. Methyl cellulose or HMC, they are not having the sweet taste. We don't add sugars also here. Then how to get the sweet taste? We can add saccharin, saccharin or sodium saccharin. Saccharin is about 250 to 500 times sweeter than compared to sucrose. Saccharin is 250 to 500 times sweeter than compared to sucrose. One gram of saccharin sweetness is equal to half kilogram of the sucrose. So in such a manner it is having some sweet taste. But there is a disadvantage here. Saccharin, it leaves bitter taste, bitter aftertaste. At the time of consuming sweetness only, but once after a few minutes, we feel some bitterness in the tongue. That's the disadvantage of the saccharin. And we can go for the alternatively cyclamates. Cyclamates 30 times sweeter when compared to sucrose. There is no bitter aftertaste, unlike saccharin, but it is, prob it is having the problem of the cancer. It, ca it may cause the cancer. So, Better nowadays, maximum in the market, it is aspartame is only available. Generally, for diabetic patients, we used to use the non-sugar, like sugar-free uh, pellets. That pellets are made of the aspartame. It is 200 times sweeter when compared to sucrose. It is not having the disadvantages of the uh, bitter aftertaste. It is not causing the cancer. So, it is the best one generally we are using in the preparation of the Syrup for the diabetic patient. These are the sweetening agents other than carbohydrates. Invert syrup. Invert syrup is more sweeter when compared to the normal simple syrup. Why? It is having fructose also. That is, invert syrup, how to prepare this one? You take the sucrose, which is a disaccharide, C12, H122O11. And by adding a little amount of the HCl and followed by neutralization with the calcium carbonate and sodium carbonate, we can proceed for the preparation of the invert syrup, which is having the glucose and fructose, aldohexose and ketohexose. This ketohexose is fructose, otherwise called as levulose. It is more sweeter when compared to sucrose and dextrose also. Because the fructose is formed in the preparation, it is more sweeter when compared to the normal sucrose. Invert syrup, you add a small amount of invert syrup with the normal syrup, it, we can prevent the crystallization. If you prevent crystallization, we can stop the cap locking problem of the syrups. Cap locking. That is because of the climatic changes, sugar may be crystalline and is coming and settling in the cap. We are not able to open the cap, it's called as the cap locking problem. And here what is forming? Levulose, otherwise called as the fructose. Now this invert syrup is having all these three. Levulose, otherwise called as fructose, sucrose and dextrose. The sweetness is varying like this. 173, 174. Out of these three, levulose, fructose is 173 times. That means it is having more sweet, 173, more sweetness. And next preference to the sucrose and low lowest sweetness to the dextrose. Okay. Now invert sugar is invert sugar is 1.23 times sweet when compared to the sucrose. We add a small amount of invert syrup in the normal syrups also to make it more sweeter. And even because of this inversion, because of this presence of the levulose, it causes caramelization. Sometimes in the laboratory when you are making the syrups, it is causing coming some darkness in the preparation. It is called as caramelization. Caramelization is because of the presence of the fructose. Simply 
we can call it as the darkening of the preparation. Caramelization otherwise called as the darkening of the preparation. This is about the brief account of the invert serum. What are the methods of preparation of serums? Majorly, there are four methods. Heart process, percolation, addition of the medicament to the flavored syrup, agitation without heat. Totally four methods. Heart process, using a water bath, take the sucrose, add the water and using the water bath start heating. Okay. Cold process, using the percolation. Then the percolator is like this. I can use the percolation. I can say cold process. Percolation means to pass through. The menstruum or the solvent is passing through the crude drug material and takes the active principles. That is called as the percolation. We'll discuss. Third method, addition of the medicament to the flowered syrup. Addition of medicament to the flowered syrup. What are the flowered syrup I told you? Orange syrup, cocoa syrup, raspberry syrup. Like this we have a number of syrups, flowered syrups. Just to add the medicament to the flowered syrup. That's all. Right? As it is without heat. A few drugs are thermolabile. A few ingredients are thermolabile. If you are heating at high temperature, it may lose its properties, therapeutic properties. So, fourth method is the agitation without heat. Simply agitation, right? First one we'll see now, heart process. The drug, it must be thermostable and non-volatile. We are using the water bath, of course. Water bath also, temperature is up to 100. So, at such a temperature of 100, a few vitamins, few proteins may lose the uh, properties. Few enzymes may lose the properties. In such a case, don't use this method. Thermostable and non volatile. Take the sucrose, add the water, and heat on a water bath. And specific gravity of the preparation is measured by using saccharometer. Saccharometer. Excessive heating may cause the inversion. Inversion means we can get the more sweetness. Caramelization is possible. Examples by this method, acacia syrup, cocoa syrup and tolu syrup. What is that tolu? Balsam of tolu, peru balsam. We can prepare in the form of syrups by using this method. What is that? Hard process method. Next method, percolation. Otherwise called as cold process. We use a percolator, generally a conical shaped percolators we use in the bottom. We keep the loosely packed cotton plug and over that we are keeping the crude drug material here. It is sucrose only. And you keep a filter tap over this one. Over that you pour the solvent, otherwise called as menstruum. Here it is crude drug. Of course, here we don't use any crude drug in this process, it is only your sucrose. And of course, open type you can have it and closed type you can have it. This menstruum, the solvent, which is water, of course, here, water, it is passing through this one, dissolves the active medicament of the crude drug. Here, of course, sucrose, it is dissolving. And once if you open this one, we can get the sucrose uh, syrup. Sucrose syrup, you can get it here. This is percolation, or you can say cold process. More details you can see in the extraction methods later on. The third method, addition of medicament to a flowered syrup, like cherry syrup, acacia syrup, like this we have so many uh, flowered syrups, right? Addition of the crude extract. What is crude extract? You take some crude drug. From that, it is, uh, this crude extract is having some, crude drug is having some active principles. We have to extract those things. That active principles may be polar or non-polar. 
So depending upon the type of the polarity of the active principle in the crude drug, we have to use this solvent. Most of the time, most of the cases we use the alcohol because it is highly polar. It absorbs, it dissolves so many active principles from the crude drugs. So in the preparation of the crude extract, generally we are using the N-hexane, ethyl state, alcohol, methanol, chloroform. Like this we have number of solvents. So use all these solvents and try to extract the active principles from the crude drugs. Right? And or you can say in the preparation of tincture also we are using the alcohol. So addition of the crude extract or tincture to this syrup. Simply add it. What is that you said? Addition of medicament to the flower syrup. Take this syrup, add it, medicament. In such, we have some details like this. Okay. Alcohol dissolves all your resinous substances. For example, tolu balsam, peru balsam, all these are having some balsamic resins. To dissolve all those things, we need the alcohol. This extract is having the alcohol. Okay. We take this extract. This extract is having the alcohol. Syrup is having water. And adding the alcoholic extract to the syrup, the strength of the alcohol in the preparation decreases. Because syrup is having water. This water reduces the strength of the alcohol. Then there is a possibility for the precipitation of some of the ingredients. So filter it correctly, get the correct one. And this alcohol which is added here acts as the preservative also. And last method, agitation without heat. No heating process because the drug or the other ingredients are thermolabile in nature. Unstable at high temperature. Okay, in this method we can prepare ferrous sulfate syrup. In the previous method, what is that? Addition of the medicament to the flowered syrup, we can prepare the aromatic aerodictyon syrup. Aromatic aerodictyon syrup. Last method, we can prepare the ferrous sulfate syrup. Without heating, we can prepare the syrup. Right? Now we go for one important question. That is, preparation of compound ferrous phosphate. Preparation of compound ferrous phosphate syrup. Compound ferrous phosphate syrup is very important examination point of view for all the students. Right? The synonym, the other name for the compound ferrous phosphate syrup, parish food, otherwise called as the parish syrup or chemical food. Chemical food. We can use this one as a source of iron. We can say this, this preparation is meant for hematinic purpose to increase the iron levels in the body. We can use this as a calcium source also. This preparation is having 0 0.40 to 0.45 percent of the iron. And this preparation is having 0 0.5 to 0.58 percent of the calcium. Right? What are the ingredients in this formulation? Sucrose, sweetening agent, viscosity builder, osmotic pressure builder, for all these things, sucrose. Calcium carbonate, acting gradient, calcium source. This is imparting 0.5 to 0.58 percent in the final preparation. Right? Iron, hematic purpose. Cochineal, cochineal, C O C H I N E A L, coloring agent. Coloring agent. Why do you add coloring agent here? To mask the change of the color in the preparation. Why there is a change of color in the preparation? We are forming some ferrous acid phosphates. There is a possibility for the oxidation converts to the ferric forms. The color change is possible. So once there is a change in the color, the patient gets upright. What has happened to my syrup? So to avoid that problem, therapeutically both are same, but it may cause some confusing effects. To avoid that one, we have to conceal the dye. We have to conceal the color change by using the coloring agent cochineal. Potassium bicarbonate, other ingredients, other active ingredients, sodium phosphate, sodium phosphate, and orange flower water as the flower agent, and finally purified water. So here we divide ingredients into three groups. Iron, take this iron first of all. To this iron in a small beaker, to the iron you add phosphoric acid. Phosphoric acid is added to the iron. Start heating. Okay, 
Now it is forming the ferrous acid phosphate. Ferrous acid phosphate is formed here. This is the first stage preparation of ferrous acid phosphate. Here only iron is added to the phosphoric acid. So it may have little excess of the phosphoric acid which is not used here properly. It may have little excess. Right? Second stage preparation of acid phosphates of calcium carbonate, potassium bicarbonate and sodium phosphate. Preparation of acid phosphates of calcium, potassium and sodium. Write all these three here. Calcium carbonate, calcium carbonate. Next, potassium bicarbonate, potassium bicarbonate. Next, sodium phosphate, sodium acid phosphate. Not acid phosphate, it is disodium phosphate, disodium phosphate, right? Now, to all these three, we are adding the phosphoric acid. We do not add separately, like a capacious vessel, a china dish, in the Sutix laboratory, you take all this calcium carbonate, potassium bicarbonate and sodium phosphate. In this china dish, you add phosphoric acid. Mix thoroughly. Start heating. Right? Now, it evolves carbon dioxide from the preparation and it forms the acid phosphates of the calcium, potassium and sodium. Calcium, potassium and sodium. CaCO3 plus H3PO4 gives calcium acid phosphate. Potassium bicarbonate with the phosphoric acid gives the potassium acid phosphate. Sodium phosphate with the phosphoric acid gives the sodium acid phosphates. Right? Now we have three acid phosphates here. Whatever phosphoric acid is used, used here may not be sufficient but in the first stage we have more amount of the phosphoric acid. Now you combine these two. Combine these two, right? Whatever excess phosphoric acid present here, it is helpful for the complete formation of the acid phosphates of the calcium, potassium, and sodium. So now we have combined the stage one and stage two. Now in this preparation, is having the acid phosphates of the iron, calcium, potassium, and sodium. Here, what I told you in the starting, what is the cochineal here is a coloring agent. Is a coloring agent. This is from an insect called as the Coccus cacti. Coccus cacti. Collect this Coccus cacti and from that you have to separate this coloring agent. You take this Coccus cacti and add to water and start heating. The coloring agent is coming out. Right? Now filter and once again heat this preparation. So we are getting the colored solution. Okay, now to this colored solution, you add the sucrose. It has become syrup now. Cochineal syrup is ready now. To this, you add this combination of these two. Why do you prepare coloring agent here? Why do you prepare coloring syrup here? That is, this preparation as such is having some pale green color because of ferrous groups. But while storing, it may get oxidized, it may form some ferric forms. It may be turning to the reddish brown color, reddish brown color. While storing, okay, for example, the patient bought a preparation which is having green color. He has stored in, the, in his cupboard or in the refrigerator. After some time, color changed to reddish brown. How the patient feels? He is afraid of the things. What is happening to my preparation? To avoid that one? To avoid the, to conceal the change of color, we are using coloring agent like cochineal set. We are using about some 0.2 to 0.8 ml of the preparation as hematonic. This is the preparation of the compound ferrous phosphate syrup, which is very, very important examination point of view. Otherwise called as chemical food, parish syrup or parish food. Next one, tolu syrup prepared by using the tolu balsam. Tolu balsam, peru balsam, almost the same principles only here. This tolu balsam is having 25% of the cinnamic and benzoic acids. Of course, they are not active principles here. We want resins only from this one. Resins are allium resins present in this tolu balsam is required. To the tolu balsam, sucrose and water, how do you prepare this syrup? We will see that now. 
take the hot water, boiling water, add to the uh, tulu balsam and heat it for about 30 minutes on a water bath. You get some extract, you get some hot mass, proceed for the filtration. To the filtrate, you add the sucrose. Mix it thoroughly, adjust the final volume, that is the preparation of the thalus syrup. So in a cool place. What do you mean by cool place? Cool place, as per IP, it is 8 to 25 centigrade. 8 to 25 degrees centigrade. Cold place, cold place means 2 to 8 centigrade. 2 to 8 centigrade. Of course, here we use only cool place, less than 25 is required. 2 to 8 ml, we can use it. In the preparation of the cough syrup, cough mixtures, to get the expectorant action, we use the tolu syrup. A few more syrups now, that is citric acid syrup, codeine phosphate syrup, and chlorpheniramine malleate syrup. Citric acid syrup is a flavoring syrup. And codeine phosphate syrup in the treatment of cough. Chlorpheniramine malleate syrup, in the treatment of allergic problems, antihistamine problems now. Okay. To prepare citric acid syrup, we use citric acid, lemon tincture, and purified water and syrup. Dissolve citric acid in water, add lemon tincture, and finally you add the syrup. Quantum sufficient syrup. So what is that? Dissolve citric acid in purified water, add the lemon tincture and finally make up the volume with the syrup. And this is citric acid, suitable for acidic drugs only, not suitable for the alkaline drugs like phenobarbitone. And this is a flavored vehicle. Next, codeine phosphate syrup in the treatment of cough, anti right? Codeine phosphate, chloroform spirit, Purified water and syrup. Here, chloroform spirit serves the purpose of the preservative. Dissolve codeine phosphate in water. Add the chloroform spirit. Make up the volume with the syrup. The final strength of the codeine phosphate in the syrup is 0 0.46 to 0.54 percent weight by volume. And this is anti tissue in the treatment of cough. Other syrups like chlorpheniramine malleate, antihistamine syrups, is also correct. The chlorpheniramine malleate, add dissolve in water, add the syrup, make up the volume. That's the preparation of the uh, few types of the syrups. Simple syrup IP, simple syrup BP. It means it is 66.6 percent .6 weight by weight of sucrose. Simple syrup ESP means it is 85% weight by volume of sucrose. 85% weight by volume of sucrose. Simple syrup doesn't require any preservative. What's the reason? 2 grams of sucrose protects 1 gram of water from the microbial attack. Okay, the strength of sucrose is less than what are the preservatives you can add to the preparation. That is, glycerin. Glycerin protects equal volume of the aqueous solution from the microbial attack. 1 ml of glycerin protects 1 ml of water from the microbial attack. Methyl paraben. What is methyl paraben? Propyl paraben. Methyl paraben. Methyl para hydroxy benzoic acid. Propyl para hydroxy benzoic acid. We can use as preservatives. Benzoic acid at a strength of 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 percent. Sodium benzoate we can use 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 percent as preservative. And even alcohol also we can use as preservative. If the final preparation is having alcohol a strength of 18 percent, it is preserved. It's not that 90 percent alcohol. It is not that 18 percent. We are adding 95 percent alcohol, but total preparation is having alcohol at a strength of 18 percent, means it is preserved from the microbial attack. 
This is about the preservatives, preservation of syrups. Syrups are sweet, viscous, aqueous preparations with the high osmotic pressure, which is a very important examination point of view. Hope you understand. Thank you very much.